It's actually the Alaska Seafood Cooperative. Cooperative. <clears throat> so, um, and it is, it's allocations as a conservation tool and uh, let's see if I can, so it's Alaska Seafood Cooperative. Um, it was formed in 2008. There's 17 trawl catcher processors that are involved. It was formed under a very similar scheme to what Eric uh, talked about. Uh, the Amendment 80 sector is the non-Pollock trawl catcher processors that fish in the Bering Sea and, uh, and Gulf of Alaska. <clears throat> Besides flatfish, they fish for rockfish, Atka mackerel, cod. Um, okay, it's one of the largest flatfish fisheries in the world. Uh, we have access to over uh, 300,000 metric tons of ground fish, um, but we haven't harvested over uh, ABC or OFL or even TAC. Um, uh, this, this is the interesting thing about this program. It wasn't designed to prevent us from uh, going over our tax. We hadn't been reaching our tax, but rather to retain more of the fish that we were catching. Uh, my perspective of the council's perspective was that re the retention levels were too low in the multi-species fisheries. Prior to uh, 2000, less than 50% of the fish that we were catching were processed into products. Um, the solution that the council came up with was to impose ground fish retention standards, starting at 65% of what you, everything you catch, elevating up to 85%, which we would have gone into effect in uh, 2011. Um, to, to, to put this into place, we needed to have two observers on the vessels at all times. We needed flow scales to measure all harvests that came on board, electronic daily uh, reporting uh, that would, we would report the harvest and the production each day. Couldn't mix the hauls that we brought on board so that they could uh, accurately count our harvest. Um, as part of the program, industry said, well, wait, to do this, uh, we need to slow down the race for fish. Uh, and there's also going to be this impact on small vessels that are going to be retaining more and more of less valuable fish that used to be thrown away. Part of the program that was, uh, uh, they allowed us to form co-ops uh, to share the burden of ground fish retention. So the standard was looked at over the fleet, over the, co the entire co-op instead of on an individual vessel basis. Um, the results uh, have been great, apparently. Um, the first year, um, it was actually a 67 percent uh, requirement. 2008, we were in the mid 80s. Uh, 2009, we, we actually, the, the standard was 75 percent. We retained over 90 percent, and this year we're retaining over 90 percent of the fish as well. Um, from our perspective, the problem was that the race for fish resulted in reduced harvest and revenue opportunities. Um, the solution is individual vessel accountability. Um, we were suffering the tragedy of the commons. People that would try and slow down their fishing um, to, to f focus on areas where you would catch more of the bigger fish were suffering because other people would catch basically the bycatch species that limited us first. And um, we, we would shut down. The year before uh, the program went into effect, our fishing ended August 7th because the PSC allocation for halibut had been, had been caught. Um, so we were able to form co-ops. We shifted our view from uh, dollars per day to dollars per fish. Now we know that somebody else isn't going to catch our fish, so we want to make the most out of every one that we bring on board. Before, we knew that the fishery was going to shut down someday, sometime because someone was going to take that last halibut. So we tried to catch as much, make as much money as we could, basically through high grading. Um, we reduced the amount of our unwanted fish that we were catching because we were able to go focus, move and find those fish. We've decreased the regulatory discards because of uh, a number of, um, of, the, of the provisions in this rule. Um, so we have coincident openings for all target fisheries. Before, we would have allocations of crab and halibut by season, by area, by time. And we would have to go fish in that area whether or not the fish were there. Now, at the beginning of the season, all of our targets are open and we don't close until um, one of them is taken. That meant that we were throwing away target species, species that were on bycatch at one time. Now we can keep everything that we catch pretty much. 
Um, no need for seasonal allocations of PSC. We get a PSC on a per vessel basis. We decide when and where to use it. Um, it's part of this uh, coincident. The bycatch retention rule for Pollock. We were discarding Pollock because the rule had said that we could only have 20% on board at any time. Because of the monitoring uh, improvements, we were able to go to a trip basis so that when we landed, we, we had to have 20% or less Pollock on board. That dramatically reduced the discards in, that, in our fishery. Um, so now vessels can move away from areas of high bycatch without losing uh, fishing opportunities. You can stand down during periods of high bycatch. For example, uh, a lot of times we won't be fishing at night, whereas we, we had before, because at night we were getting higher bycatch rates. Uh, and we'll move, um, once the, we see the bycatch rate of halibut or crab go up, you'll see the vessels move to different areas. Um, we've been working a lot more on uh, uh, improving gear, the selectivity of gear, uh, halibut excluder devices, uh, taking the, 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 uh, the trawl gear off the bottom to avoid crab. Um, we have uh, panels that, that will try and exclude uh, some round fish when we want, some flat fish when we want. All, all this slows down your ability to catch fish because you're excluding some of the things you actually like. But in the end, your quota, you, you, you can fish further into the year and, and catch your quota. Um, and we haven't had any closures during the, the cooperative time period for PSC or TAC limits. We've ended up not having enough days. We've just run out of days of fishing. Uh, between 2007 and 2008, we increased the amount of, of product we put up by 50%. Now, our profits didn't go up by 50% because the amount of cod that was allocated to us was cut in half. This is gear that we developed over the last five years and, and have uh, got the council to um, adopt and NIMPS to adopt it by regulation, so it will force everyone to use it. It's a lot less damaging on the seafloor uh, and also avoids some of the uh, crab bycatch. Um, so the race for fish is over, now it's a race for efficiency. We're trying to make as much money out of each fish that we bring on board while reducing the amount of impact on the bottom and reducing the amount of, uh, uh, of bycatch. We've been able to reduce the number of tows we're, we're making, so we're reducing our fuel consumption. We, uh, to, to, uh, since we're keeping so much more of what we catch, we don't have to fish as much. Fish as much. Um, we can go in target areas of high abundance. Um, you know, obviously, our retention rates are up. One of the things that forced us to do is develop new markets for small fish and fish such as Alaska Place, uh, Arrowtooth Flounder that we really didn't have markets for. We were forced to deliver that to market and now we're growing those markets. Even though they're low, low value, um, um, they're, they're, they're building and we think that there's a big future in that. Also, we were able to get uh, almost all of our fisheries certified uh, as sustainable by MSC just this past spring. So um, we're really happy with all the accomplishments that, that, that we've had. We think that there's a lot more that can be done, but we think that, that stopping the race for fish uh, has had substantial uh, conservation uh, improvements, and uh, we think that, that, that it can be used in a lot of different areas. So that's it.